When we study the digestive system, we usually are familiar with many of the organs. We're familiar with the foods we eat. But as you can imagine, we're going to learn a lot of detail in this system. Uh, we're going to learn a lot of different enzymes. There's a number of different hormones that are involved that regulate your digestive system. And we usually divide the digestive system into the GI tract, gastrointestinal tract, also known as the alimentary canal, and then the accessory digestive organs. Accessory digestive organs don't form the tract. They don't form the tube. So those would be teeth, tongue, salivary glands are accessory digestive organs. Your liver, gallbladder, and pancreas are what I call the big three. Those are the organs that are, are vital. Well, two of the three are vital. You can actually live without your gallbladder. But those organs are not part of the tract, but they assist they specifically assist the small intestine in many of its processes. So let's take a look at the six important functions. They all revolve around the ability to get nutrients, right? I think we know that our digestive system is our body's way of getting nutrients, whether it's nutrients that contain energy, like carbohydrates, uh, fat, and protein or other nutrients such as vitamins and minerals and water. And in order to do this, in order to get those nutrients, there are six important functions the digestive system performs. The first one is ingestion. This is simply the process of taking food and liquid uh, into the mouth, or we call it eating. Uh, so that's an easy one to, to think about. The next one is also putting things in that GI tract. So you ingest the food, but you also have to secrete into the tube. Uh, so we, have to, we often secrete a lot of water along the GI tract. Uh, acid, so hydrochloric acid gets secreted at your stomach. Uh, buffers, we often use a buffer, bicarbonate to buffer the acid if that acid uh, enters an organ that can't tolerate that acid. The stomach is really the only organ that can tolerate that acidity. So we buffer the other parts of the GI tract. A number of different enzymes that digest the different types of nutrients. So we've got enzymes that digest carbohydrates. We've got enzymes that digest uh, triglycerides, and we've got enzymes that digest protein. Those all get secreted into the lumen of the GI tract. The lumen is the, is the inside, the hollow part of the GI tract. So we ingest, we secrete, we mix the material in with saliva, we mix it in with the enzymes, we mix it in with the water and the acids, and we move that material, propulsion. This is all using smooth muscle of the GI tract. Churning is kind of a way, another name for mixing, so a lot of churning is done at the stomach. We obviously move the whole way along. Uh, we call that peristalsis. Uh, we typically study peristalsis when we get to the esophagus. That's really the only function of the esophagus is to move that material to the stomach. Peristalsis involves smooth muscle contractions uh, that kind of squeeze and push the material through the GI tract. We digest, and digest comes in two broad forms. We mechanically digest or break large material down into smaller material. Uh, we call chewing our food mastication. So we masticate, we mix, maybe say your tongue is going to mix, your, your stomach is going to mix, we move the material. That's all mechanical digestion. Uh, it's, it's, it's breaking large material down into smaller material. It's not 
breaking the chemical bonds in the nutrients. Breaking the chemical bonds or chemical digestion requires the enzymes. And that all occurs inside the lumen. Then we absorb, so that's getting those what we call end products of digestion to come inside the body. So come into the bloodstream or come into the lymph. I'll remind you that a lot of our fat-soluble nutrients, fatty acids, fat-soluble vitamins, enter the lymph as opposed to blood. Then whatever's left in the GI tract, we eliminate in the form of feces. So obviously not everything we ingest gets eventually absorbed. Uh, kind of the classic thing is fiber. So if dietary fiber does not get absorbed, it, it kind of just goes right through the track. Uh, we also eliminate other waste. Uh, for example, if you recall bilirubin, uh, a lot of that gets eliminated in feces as well. So these are the six major uh, functions uh, that all revolve around getting nutrients. These are a couple pictures of some gross anatomy. You know, this, just looking at some of these organs that we're going to talk about along the way. The digestive system, we typically think about it as traveling down the GI tract. So instead of covering all the anatomy at once and then covering all the physiology like we did in the respiratory system, I like to kind of start at the mouth, talk about some of the anatomy, some of the physiology, then move into the throat then down the esophagus, then we're going to enter the stomach, then we're going to enter the small intestine, and when we're in the small intestine, that's when we talk about the liver, gallbladder, and pancreas. Then we're going to talk about the large intestine, and then finally the rectum and anus. So, so learning the digestive system, you just kind of work your way down uh, the GI tract. Notice in red, we're just highlighting some of those accessory digestive organs. So we need to know the, the path food takes, starting at your mouth and ending at the anus. But in red are these accessory organs, like your salivary glands, your liver and gallbladder, your pancreas. Over here is an actual image. Notice things look quite a bit different in real life. Um, there's a lot of kind of adipose tissue deposits, and um, but you can see that you got the small intestines in here, large liver here. Uh, can kind of make out the gallbladder sitting inferior to the liver. Um, you can't really find the pancreas because it's behind the stomach. Um, you can see parts of the large intestine. Here's the cecum, which is this part here, this first part of the large intestines. So I, it's always nice to see what things look like in real life. In the next video, we're going to look at the tissue level before we move on and start talking about what happens in your mouth.